Let's see how many goofs we can find that have remained mostly hidden for decades on the awesome classic TV series Wonder Woman that ran from 1977 to 1979 and starred Linda Carter. On the Wonder Woman episode Screaming Javelins, which guest stars Rick Springfield and Henry Gibson as the villain, Gibson is seen skydiving at the very beginning of the episode. Beautiful as ever. What was it General MacArthur said? Did you notice anything off? I have returned. Have you noticed anything different now? My old friend Diana Prince. We see what they did is they mixed in footage of someone really skydiving and a studio shot of Gibson. But they forgot to give him a mask like the skydiver was wearing in the real footage. Looks like Gibson is taking his mask off and on to give his diabolical monologue. What was it General MacArthur said? Just in case you recognize the actor and can't quite place where you've seen him, he appeared in 78 episodes of Laugh-In. He was Rongo Star on two episodes of F Troop. He played the Indian on the Three Stooges movie The Outlaws is Coming. And his last credit was Boston Legal as a judge for 24 episodes. <laughs> Now I bet you're wondering what in the world could have been wrong with this transformation scene from the same episode. Well every now and again when Diana Prince does her transformation into Wonder Woman, things in the background appear and then they disappear. In this case it was the trash can. Kind of makes you wonder if her transformation somehow destroys things that are in the vicinity. Now, when Wonder Woman's running after Rick Springfield, who wishes he had Jesse's girl, even though he has Linda Carter chasing him, makes no sense, Wonder Woman jumps onto a trampoline before leaping off after him. I tell you, something ain't right with that boy. Seems like he ought to turn around the other direction. Well, anyway, notice when Wonder Woman leaps off the trampoline, you can clearly see that there's nobody else around, except for that arm that comes out of nowhere. Again, you can clearly see that there's nobody around. You can see all the way around the trampoline. But then this arm pops out of nowhere to the right. It almost seems to coincide with Wonder Woman's leap. Well, all I can say is it must have had something to do with this stunt. But I'm not sure exactly what. Wonder Woman. I didn't know. I thought you were that lady. I know. Oh, he didn't know it was Wonder Woman. Well, I guess that makes sense. He had to not know. Otherwise, why would he be going the opposite direction? I don't really think of this as a goof, it's just something interesting that I read. When Wonder Woman leaps up through a window several stories up, there's a mattress there for it to land on. I mention it's not because it's what I call a mistake, it's not really noticeable, but it's interesting to see how they did things back then. You know, in case you want to leap up several stories in the air through a window, you really should consider having a mattress on the floor to soften your landing. Once in the building, Wonder Woman throws two bad guys down the hall. Well, one is a bad woman. But still, the point is, they both go flying and land out of our view. But just for a second, you can see the mattress they land on stick out in into view. You know, being a stuntman would have been fun back then. Except for the jumping off tall buildings. I wouldn't have liked that. But that, that would have been a little too much for me. But the play fighting and landing on mattresses and stuff, that would have been, that would have been a lot of fun. Now check this out. If you keep your eye on the shadow when the guy is thrown across the hall and lands, you can see the shadow of the mattress give in as he's landing on it. It's pretty cool. In the episode Anne Slews, 77, I hope I said that right, notice in this shot the treads are moving. The tank, or armored personnel carrier, is trying to push forward. So basically from this view of Linda Carter, the vehicle is actually in park. It's not moving at all, or even trying to. Then they show us the treads close up from the side view, and it gives you the illusion that the vehicle is trying to run over Wonder Woman, but she's stopping it. I'm arranged for full cooperation from British intelligence. 
Goodbye. <laughs> Next in the episode Knockout, Diana Prince changes clothes before she turns into Wonder Woman. Without actually changing clothes. Notice when Linda Carter's stunt double jumps out of the car, she's wearing a purple dress. But when they show Diana Prince transform into Wonder Woman, she's wearing blue jeans. I guess they hoped we wouldn't notice. Up yours. Hmm, <coughs> well that wasn't very nice. Did you catch the goof in this first season episode of Wonder Woman? Wonder Woman is catching a grenade thrown at her by the skin-diving Nazis. She catches a grenade, she throws it away, it explodes. Now where's the uh, blueprint you might ask? We'll take a closer look at where the grenade landed and where the explosion occurred. They are actually two separate locations, which obviously shouldn't be the case. In this scene, it looks like a stunt woman is being launched in the air and then they're cutting away to Linda Carter for the close-up. But what the heck is that dark figure in the background? Is it Bigfoot? I mean, is it a ghost? Is it just a stagehand helping her be launched in the air? What is going on here? Y you be the judge. Okay, in the Season 1 episode, The Feminine Mystique, Part 1, there's actually two goose visible, which you can see. Okay, first Wonder Woman is shown outdoors with a dark colored wall behind her about to deflect bullets. Then just a second or two later, we see Wonder Woman standing in front of a blue background. Most likely inside a studio. You could even see her shadow behind her on the wall. Then it cuts back to the MP and back to her, and now all of a sudden she's back in front of the dark wall outside again. Now if you look really close, you can also see a special remote in her hand that triggers the sparkling fireworks effect when bullets are supposed to be hitting her bracelet. And these days they would just use CGI, but still you have to admit sometimes practical effects register with your eye as being more real than computer generated images do. Now in the second season episode, The Deadly Toys, Wonder Woman is shown lifting up the back of a van as the bad guy tries to speed off. But just for a second, if you look closely, you can see that the van is actually jacked up in the back. In the Season 1 episode, Wonder Woman vs. Gargantua, a stool magically disappears when Diana Prince transforms into Wonder Woman. I wonder, was the stool completely destroyed when she turned into Wonder Woman? But then how did all the other furniture survive? And back then they would use rolling tables to make lifting heavy people look effortless for Wonder Woman. Now look really closely towards your right at the man's hand and you'll see the edge of the table. For some reason on Wonder Woman they would uh, sometimes use real people and sometimes use dolls in the invisible plane. Which this is really noticeable if you're watching Wonder Woman on a big screen TV. In the season one episode, Wonder Woman vs. Gargantuan, the man that the ape is supposed to be carrying down appears to be a dummy. That is, until he gets down off the building and instantly you can tell it's the actor again. Now in the episode, The Bermuda Triangle Crisis, season two, episode four, Wonder Woman drops a mine into what is supposed to be the ocean. But if you look really closely, it's obviously a swimming pool, which is really evident if you watch this scene on a big screen TV, the size of which did not even exist when the show first aired, which is why most of us never noticed a lot of these bloopers back in the day. Well, this has been TV Crazy Man, and you're watching the TV Crazy Man channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, hit the bell for future notifications, subscribe if you haven't already, but please let me know what you thought about the video. And uh, I've got another channel called Freddy Cat Cartoons. It features family-friendly animation with characters that I've made and created myself. And uh, if you like that sort of thing, I hope you'll check it out and subscribe to that channel as well. Well, thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day.